Okay, today I started working on uh, learning how to hook up the uh, the chip that makes this USB to serial conversion work. Uh, I've got a few of them, and I wanted to test out each one and see see how they worked and um, try to figure out how I'm going to do it on my own uh, mom's timer circuit board. And uh, the goal was basically, you know, to recreate what this does so that I can uh, both program the microcontroller and do serial um, I.O. with it for debugging and stuff like that. So um, I've got two of these these uh, adapter boards here and they both have uh, this chip on it here. It's called the FTDI 232RL and it's a four dollar chip. It does way more than what I need it to but um, it's what all my little adapter boards have got. Uh, so I wanted to just grab, grab some of those and, and play around with them. I've got this other um, FTDI chip. It's the most expensive, inexpensive one that I could find that they make that has the uh, serial UART capability. So I wanted to try it out. And it's half the price, so um, maybe, you know, I think this, this one will work just fine, actually. It's got um, all the, the basics that I need and um, costs half the price. And then there's also this um, CH340G that is getting kind of popular. They're, um, they're half the price again, or maybe a, a third of the price of the, uh, F, the FTDI 230X. It needs to have an extra crystal. It doesn't have the, uh, all the capabilities that the FTDI ones do, like um, they have a, a three volt uh, regulator inside of them that you can run up to 50 milliamps off of. I don't really need that, but um, it does come in handy, like I'm using it right now on this one. I've got the, the board here, this FTDI board here configured to run off that 3.3 volts. Uh, whereas this, this CH340, you're, it'll run off the USB power and everything will run on 5 volts, or you have to provide your own regulator to drop it down to 3.3 volts. And then the other thing that's interesting with these is you can configure what some of the pins do. And you can even write up some software that runs on your computer and change the pen states through the USB connection. So you can have your computer uh, muck around with highs and lows directly and you don't have to have a microcontroller to do that, but, which is kind of interesting. But I don't think I'm gonna be using any of that. So I think theoretically I could go with this, um, but one of the challenges is getting these things I found, I found a little pack of five of them on eBay, but they're not on DigiKey or Mouser, so that's one of the challenges with them. So I'll show you my little, uh, my little program that I've got. I just made a little USB um, to serial tester program, basically. Just I wanted to do some serial I.O., make sure that that stuff comes back. I showed this last time, uh, and it just blinks a, uh, an LED that's on the microcontroller. And um, so what I did was I just tried to hook up all these chips and, and make it so my little serial program worked okay. To do the 232RL chip, there's lots of data sheets, uh, or lots of schematics I should say online, on, on like the FTDI basic, and it shows exactly how to do it on this 232RL chip, all the different pins and where they go. How to, if you want LEDs, you how to hook up LEDs. And, um, very straightforward, so uh, it does work okay. I just followed along, hooked up all those pins and, and capacitors and stuff, and this one worked just fine. So uh, next I'm gonna uh, try out the uh, CH340G and see how it works. All right, the CH340G is all hooked up and it looks to be working okay. The, uh, the hookup for it, um, what I did was uh, first, I downloaded the data sheet for it. There is an English version of it, and they don't have a picture of the pins in the English version of the data sheet. But I was able to find the, the pin out on a uh, on a website, and I just took a screenshot of the picture that they showed. And basically, uh, the uh, CH340G just has less pins than these the T and the R that are shown in this English data sheet. So it was pretty easy to just. Um, follow along and get the right things hooked up. The, um, the only little trick with it that I found was pin four. 
this 3.3 volt pin. Uh, since I, I'm just running it right off the USB power, this again doesn't have a 3.3 volt regulator in it. You just have to put a capacitor between pin four and ground when you run in that kind of situation. And besides that, um, it seems to be working just fine. The, um, you know, it does take a couple capacitors in this crystal, but, um, you know, really it's not a whole lot different than the, um, the FTDI-232 over there. So the, uh, the test of it here is, I'll make my, my LED right now, it's doing a slow blink. I'll go ahead and change that to be 100 for the blink delay. And let me make sure I've got all this set right. Yep. And that's good. So let me hit the button here to upload it. And um, I don't have any LEDs hooked up or transmit and receive, so you can't see it transmitting. But yeah, it worked okay. It's blinking the LED real fast. So this does seem to work okay. Um, the serial communication um, is working the way it's supposed to. If I, if I type in stuff and send it, it repeats it back to me. So it does seem to work okay. Uh, no complaints with the uh, CH340G. All right, I've been playing around with the uh, F2DI230X chip on here, and it is working just fine. And um, I did plug in a couple LEDs. You can see there's a green and a yellow one, uh, just to see some of the features that you can do with these FTDI chips that the, um, the CH340G doesn't give you. Um, so right now I've got one of the pens on the FTDI configured to blink when there's a transmission or there's a reception and uh, it's kind of neat you can uh, they've got this utility it's called FT prog and it allows you to configure for those pens but you do need to make sure your serial monitor is closed before you do it let me try that again Okay, so there we go. So this program will scan for your um, FTDI chip, and then um, down here is where you can configure what these four pins do that are on the chip. And so I've got C0, which uh, is pin number 15. I've got it configured to light up or to go low, the little pound sign means go low. Some of these are, don't have that and they go high when they're activated. But it'll go low when there's a transmission or a reception. And then um, this third one, C3 here, it will go low when your host computer goes to sleep. And I've got the green LED hooked up to that right now. And so if I come over here and do the key combination to make my computer go to sleep, that little green LED will go out and my my circuit is still powered but you know the this FTDI chip knows that the computer is asleep and it drives a pin it pulls it makes the pin go low when that happens and you can hook up a MOSFET for example and you can have that turn off your circuitry when the computer goes to sleep so it doesn't draw any power when it's asleep so kind of neat so if I come over here and wake my computer back up again you'll see that green LED pop back on and um, that's something that you I don't think you can do that with the CH340G over there um, so yeah the uh, the features of, of the FTDI are, are kind of neat where you can do that configuring you can also program these uh, to change with your own computer program that you write. You can write a Java app or a .NET app um, that just changes these things. You can change these, these states, uh, you know, with a computer and not, you know, you don't have to have a microcontroller if you just wanted to turn on, if you had a situation where you just wanted to turn some pins on and off with your computer, you could do it. You could do it with these FTDI chips. So that's really cool. I had no idea that you could do any of that. The, uh, the schematic that they give you, um, shows a bunch of different examples of how to hook up the chip. This is the same for both of the FTDI chips, but this is the, the 230X data sheet. And they just show some examples and I just follow along with it. I did notice the little difference was they had a, um, a resistor here on the, data, the USB data minus and the USD data plus inputs. The other FTDI chip didn't have that. So 
So if you see right here, I've got those resistors in line. And um, so that was the only little difference there. But yeah, it's, uh, it's working just fine. And uh, this little FT prog uh, program lets you do some reconfiguring of it if you want, which is really neat. And um, I mean, I'm not even sure what you can do. You can like change the description of it. I tried doing this. I just tried changing like, you know, the string. I, I put in mom's timer. <laughs> when I plugged it in, I just wanted to see if you know, like Windows detected it as mom's timer, but no, there's there's a little bit more to it than that. You've got to change uh, the driver library some. So I don't really want to mess around with that. But um, if you do like go into the really low level details of your driver, uh, you can actually see the string. And if you do change this to say something different like mom's timer, it'll show it as mom's timer. So it's kind of kind of neat all the things that you can control. So now I got to figure out um, my big question. My open question still is: Am I going to put one of these in to the key fob unit, or am I just going to have one of these in the main body? So um, I, my mom can reprogram the the main microcontroller that's in the body of it, but the key fob maybe not. So I'm thinking about it. I'm not quite sure. It'll be way easier on me if I don't make it so I can reprogram the key fob. But anyways, I need to think through that. All right, that's it for the day.